Hey guys, the name is Chris Parachi. Welcome to comment time number 11. I have some awesome comments again. So um, I just want to thank all of you guys who commented. I love seeing them, keep them coming. It's, uh, it's such a cool thing. And in today's video, there's some controversy going on as well. So uh, let's start with one of those comments. <laughs> Carl Kirk wrote, wow, this is a totally biased, unbalanced and uneducated take on the guitar world and one that feeds into the BS snobbery that exists in the world. If you have to watch and listen to this kind of rubbish to feel happy with your expensive purchase, I genuinely feel sorry for you. And then I wrote back to Carl saying he obviously didn't listen to the message of the video, which was the opposite of only expensive guitars are good and don't buy affordable guitars. And then he wrote back again, saying, okay, so I know you're a YouTuber, uh, you are correct beyond this, I don't know about your experience, but I listen to your views on the guitar manufacturing industry, so please explain your experience that informs these views. Do you have first-hand experience of this? Have you been to factories in Korea, China, Indonesia? I don't want to bust your balls, uh, but what I heard was uninformed guitar store talk, guitar store talk uh, which is naive and borderline xenophobic. US is best, everywhere in Asia is inferior that only serves the purpose of promoting guitar sales. Uneducated was harsh, so I apologize for that. Um, taken, cool. Uh, but as I said, the content you presented is uninformed trash talk designed to justify expensive guitar purchases. All right, so we clearly disagree on this subject, Carl, which is totally fine. I will not offend you or whatever. I have some overview um, over the guitar industry and everything, first of all, because I'm a guitar tech in one of the world's biggest music stores and that well gives a couple of hundreds of guitars every week in your hands and um, that's quite an experience i'm not saying i'm like almighty and i know everything not at all i learn new stuff every day and i hope this will stay this way for the rest of my life i also customize guitars i um, am a guitar tech as told, working in a music store, and that music store happens to have a lot of relations and uh, companies to work with and whatever. So you have some sort of an insight in how guitars are produced in Asia, let's say. And uh, because I'm such a guitar fanatic, I have quite a few expensive guitars in my hands as well because I want to try them, I want to see how they're made, whatever. So, um, and I'm also really, really picky. So. Of course, I have some sort of an overview and um, definitely first-hand information. Have you been to factories in Korea, China, Indonesia? Not personally, unfortunately. This could change, hopefully, um, as soon as these current COVID times are over and one can travel again. But um, I don't really think you need to be there personally. If you see a lot of those guitars that come out of those factories, you can have a pretty good overview of what to expect, like what is the quality. I don't want to bust your balls, but what I heard was uninformed guitar store talk. Um, US is best, everywhere Asia is inferior. I don't remember saying anything like this in my video. And when I said that US or UK, German, Italian, you name it, made guitars are of better quality was because if a company decides to produce in these countries, they decide they go for quality and not for quantity. It's a little bit the other way around as soon as a company decides to produce a guitar or bass in China or in Indonesia. And all of this has nothing to do with the place, with the country the guitar is built in. You could produce incredible custom shops in China of course, you could build up a small workshop and have all the right people who know what they're doing and, and build fantastic instruments. Just It's just not happening because companies will not want to do this because the customers will probably not want to buy it. Like a dude sitting in France and he is a crazy luthier and has an idea of building a guitar. I want him to build a guitar. And if it's possible in France, please, because 
that's like the identity of that product. Best example for a non-affordable, a non-budget guitar made in Asia is Strandberg guitars. Those guitars are built in China or in Indonesia. The main product range or product line is uh, produced in Indonesia. And those guitars will cost 2,000 euros or more. And it's like, what? How can they ask for that money if it's made in Asia? It should be a, an affordable guitar. Well, um, yes and no. They obviously save some costs on producing these guitars in those countries, but they didn't want to cut on anything else. So they use the pickups, the wood, the bridge type, uh, the fan fret uh, design, whatever they wanted. They stick to every single detail, uh, whether it's hardware or uh, wood quality or the weight, the looks, the blah, blah, blah. It's all the same. So it, it's basically like those instruments that are normally not produced in Asia. And this is one of those very few examples that exists. And my uninformed trash talk designed to justify expensive guitar purchases, I don't think it's bad to appreciate and love guitar luthiers and master builders' effort and, uh, and talent. I think it's awesome because we love guitars, right? Why not appreciating those who can build their best guitars. And of course, not everyone has to go out and buy a really expensive guitar. This is exactly what I told in the video. It's awesome to have affordable guitars, which are great to play, which, get, which can sometimes get stupidly close to very expensive guitars, because this way you can start out as a beginner on a guitar that's fantastic to begin with, and you can decide if you want to upgrade or not later on. Okay, this one was cool. Mr. Gilbert wrote under the Does the Neck Change the Sound video, where I tested three different necks, um, if wood makes any difference in the tone. Why do concrete and cardboard guitars sound exactly the same as wood? I don't know why would anyone say something like this. Okay, let's say someone did a video like this, like a comparison, concrete, cardboard, wood. Uh, I can see two options here. First is that whoever did it didn't really have the right gear or didn't play the right things to hear any sort of a difference or maybe the right recording method to hear any sort of a difference between these three. Let's start with nuances. If you're just shredding power chords and play something that's cranked or whatever, a lot of distortion or an amp that has a very strong own character, you can get away with a lot. You can plug in a toys guitar, a children's toy guitar, and a, a very expensive custom shop, and you can make them sound pretty much identical. I can do that. I just don't see the point of doing it. As soon as you start playing with nuances, uh, you have the right gear, and you sort of enjoy the nuances in your playing, all those differences will jump out immediately. And what do I mean by the right gear? I mean any sort of a a pretty neutral sounding amp, a good quality, not too long cable, and that's pretty much it. That's exactly why I love my Rev and why I use it all the time, because if you plug a guitar in that amp that sounds crappy, it will sound crappy. And if you plug in a guitar with a hollow body and two humbuckers, you will really clearly hear that. If you have a strat in it, it sounds very stratty. If you plug in a tally, it sounds very much like a tally. It gives you the character of the guitar. And if you have an amp like this, it doesn't matter if it's distorted or clean, everyone prefers something else. Um, these kind of amps will help you. And on top of that, if you start playing in a dynamic way, uh, like enjoying all those uh, minor things like micro bends and subtle vibratos and uh, single notes and huge power chords and everything, all those subtle differences will become huge all of a sudden. 
So it's, it's a mixture of these two things. And if you mix those two together, there's no way you will say that a concrete guitar and a cardboard guitar and a wood guitar of any type of wood will sound the same. No way. <laughs> Mark had a couple of questions under my The Gibson Battle, the Les Paul, production Les Paul versus custom shop Les Paul video I did. Isn't a traditional or classic closer to the original 58, 59 and 60? Uh, I'll answer it right away because it's a longer uh, comment. So uh, let's split it up. Um, yeah, the traditionals were the most traditional models up until the change um, the new CEO at Gibson and uh, now the standard is the traditional like the standard is the one without the weight relief body the standard is the one without any sort of a push-pull call split option it's the closest to custom shop Les Pauls you can get out of the production line I like the 60s neck but the 59 pickups which model would have this? I'm thinking I'd need to get a 60s body and swap out the pickups. Please let me know. It's really hard to tell, to be honest. I don't think um, in the Gibson Custom Shop there is a difference between the custom buckers for the 1960s models or the 1959 models or the 58 models. I think those are just called custom buckers and those are just custom buckers. Whatever you buy, you get the same pickup. There are, of course, differences if there's like a special model, like the 60s anniversaries had uh, probably different pickups. If, if there's a, a collector's choice, which is supposed to replicate a specific well-known guitar for the rest, as far as I'm concerned, 58, 59, 60, these will all have the same pickups. Ark had a second comment as well. And he's asking, I really like the sound of the 60th anniversary, uh, 1960s RO. And I'm wondering if I can get that sound going the studio route. Although I do like uh, the aesthetics of the higher end models, I'm more interested in the sound and the cash savings. I'm itching to pick up a guitar, so I sincerely appreciate your recommendations. If you want to get really close to a custom shop, Les Paul's sound with, let's say, a studio, you can, you can swap pickups, you can change the bridge, uh, all those things that are not the same on the guitars, and you will get really close. Two differences will still be there. First of all, the feel. They just feel different. The neck profile, uh, the, the um, arch on the top is different. Um, one is weight relief, the other one isn't. It's just a different balance. These will remain, of course. And the other thing is that uh, sound-wise you can get really, really close, but you cannot, in most cases, you cannot get the same sound. That's why I hate to generalize, because if you take 10 identical Les Paul Studios, they will sound slightly different. And maybe there will be one or two that will sound very close to one or two 60s anniversary custom shop Les Pauls. But since all those custom shop Les Pauls will all sound different and the studios will sound different, like how could anyone say anything that makes any sense about this whole thing? It's just too many variables and um, it doesn't really make sense to say I want a studio to sound like the 60s anniversary custom shop Les Paul. And one more tip, one thing I realized in the last years of comparing a million stuff is that you should not drive yourself crazy with, with it, with comparing things. <laughs>
All right, this is really cool. Tiago Ramalais wrote under my can you turn a strat into a tally video. I did this to one of my strats before watching this video. The bridge sound is more tally-ish now, definitely an improvement, but position four changed dramatically as it is now very thin and lo-fi with a big drop in volume. Maybe because the middle neck pickups are ceramic and higher output than the Onico tally pickup. Uh, no, that's not an issue. Um, pickup magnets will not cause something like this. I'll give you an answer in a sec. Uh, I also added a series mod with a push pull that added three great series sounds. Uh, overall, the outcome was positive, but people expecting it to sound exactly like a tally will be disappointed. I couldn't agree more. My strat sounds more tally ish, but it doesn't sound like a tally. It feels different, obviously, it's a different shape and everything, and it has a tram and everything, so um, you shouldn't expect your strat to turn into a tally, but we've discussed this in that video. If you want to check it out, it's going to be in the description box. Uh, about this thin sound, first of all, I think you're talking about position two. Position two is where you have the bridge pickup, the, the new tally pickup, and the middle strat pickup combined. So that's called position two, not position four. I'm guessing that's the issue. That's where you have this thin and really quiet sound. What you're hearing is those two pickups being out of phase. If you swap the bridge pickup, the strat bridge pickup to a tally bridge pickup, you will have to wire that tally bridge pickup the op opposite way. Uh, so you will have the black wire on the switch and the white wire on the back of the pot. With that, you reverse the phase of that tally bridge pickup, which then will be in phase with the two strat pickups in the guitar, right? So this is what you have to do. Uh, swap the two cables, black goes on the switch and the white one goes on the back of the volume pot for ground. <laughs> M had an interesting comment under my last comment time video, comment time 10. Another great video. One thing I have never understood is string tension and why one guitar strung with 10s can feel slinky and another strung with 9s or 9.5 um, gauge strings can feel stiff when both guitars are the same design, scale length and build. I totally know what you're talking about, man. I know this, I've faced this weird phenomenon a couple of times actually. The only thing I can think about is um, neck relief, not height, like the nut slot height, and just bridge setup. So overall, the setup of the guitars. Even the slightest change on, let's say, the neck relief or the uh, height of the uh, nut can make a guitar feel totally different than uh, an identical guitar of the same type. It's, it's weird, but it does change everything. I remember many years ago when I learned how to set up my own guitars, I was uh, fooling around, I was filing around and tightening and loosening the truss rod and whatever. And all of a sudden I had the feeling that my guitar changed completely. The same gauge of strings felt nicer and slinkier. And I just had way more fun playing that guitar. I felt like a better player because of something. And I couldn't explain what I did. And I was sure I will never touch the truss rod or anything ever again on the guitar because it's just magic in the air. Something happened and I, I will not be able to reproduce this current situation and setup of the guitar ever again. So, uh, <laughs> which is funny in retrospect now. You imagine all these tiny changes you make on a guitar and you would never believe that they can have such a huge effect on the playability of the guitar. And they do because they add up. If you have a slight change on the truss rod and just file the slots a little deeper, if they were too high, can make a guitar play so much easier. <coughs> Anthony Yuryev 
had a, a really interesting question under, under my last comment time video. Hey Chris, um, I have a question for you. You kind of tried many, many, many amps. You have your trusty Mesa behind and new stuff like the Rev. But what is your desert island choice if you can keep just one and why? What's more important, fun or functionality? And what was your desert island amp of choice in like 10 years time? Was it always the same or is it something new all the time? Cheers. I changed as a player over the years. So uh, my amp of choice as my desert island amp also changed, obviously. Uh, your first question was like, uh, what is the desert island amp if I can just keep one? It depends if I can take a few pedals as well. If I can take my pedal boards, I would go with the Rev Dynamis because it is for me one of the best, if not the best pedal platform amp. It just does exactly what I want. I never miss another amp as soon as I'm using my pedal board. If I'm not allowed to take any pedals, then probably the Mesa, my Mark III, because it does the clean thing really well and has a really nice rock gain. What I would miss is this spongy uh, sort of low gain crunch, this barely distorted, super low gain overdrive, something that my King of Tone pedal, my uh, my newest uh, one, the Trouble, the Double Trouble from uh, Honeybee Amps, um, or even the Copper Sound Foxcatcher, these three overdrives do for me is so special, I could never find an amp that does this sound, what these pedals give me. Another option would be this Magnetone high fidelity stereo panoramic something, whatever the name is, I'll put it somewhere here on the screen. Uh, it's one of those brown 2x10 Magnetone combos with the harmonic tremolo and the reverb and just one channel and it sounds insane. It's also insane expensive. It has a reverb, so that's solved. And it also has the prettiest, coolest stereo harmonic trem I've ever heard. It's just one chord, let it ring out and you're good for 10 minutes or at least as long as the, the chord rings. Ridiculous. So um, I think that or my Mark III Mesa would be my amp without a pedal board if I'm not allowed to bring pedals. And if I can't take my pedal board as well and just one guitar, then my Rev Dynamis. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you enjoy my videos and check out the description box for additional infos, gear links, uh, timestamps, all that fun stuff. You guys take it easy. We'll meet each other in the comment section and we'll see each other next week. Bye bye.